Okay, so the Laplace operator del squared is equal to del dot del, okay, and applied to f. And um, again, using this identity up here and our um, our definition for the uh, divert uh, for the uh, gradient, we get um, that the Laplace operator is equal to one over r squared d by dr uh, partial with respect to r r squared partial with respect to r on f. So remember, you have to do these in order. So the partial differential with respect to r acts on f. That's a new function. You multiply that by r squared. That's a new function. You take the partial derivative of that with respect to r. Okay, and then you multiply one over r squared. Similarly, over here, the next term, we have one over r squared sine theta partial with respect to uh, with respect to, to theta of the quantity sine theta partial with respect to theta of f. So again first thing we do is we take the partial of f with respect to theta, we multiply that by sine theta, we take the partial, that's a new function, we would take the partial derivative of that with respect to theta, and then we multiply by 1 over r squared sine theta. And finally, 1 over r squared sine squared theta times the second derivative of f, second partial derivative of f with respect to phi. Okay, so that is the gradient operator, I mean the uh, Laplace operator. And now we know, since we have um, uh, the Laplace operator, that's what we need. If you recall, that's what we need to do the um, uh, the um, Schrodinger equation. Okay. And so, in particular, if we if we find the if we want to find the time-independent Schrodinger equation for a central force potential, so potential is just a function of r, not a function of time, okay? And so it's just a, it's just a function of the separation between two bodies, or let's just say it's just a function of the position of, um, of, a, of a particle, okay? And so the potential energy only depends on the position, and so an example of this would be um, the force, the potential energy that uh, corresponds to uh, the electrostatic potential between uh, two charges, Q1 and Q2, okay, and it, it's inversely proportional to the distance between them R, okay. So, uh, so the Coulomb potential is an example, but not the only example, okay. So any central force potential that only depends on, on the position of the of the, uh, of the particle, okay. And so, um, and so remember, generically, the Schrodinger equation, the time-independent Schrodinger equation is the Hamiltonian operator on the left-hand side, minus h bar squared over 2m, um, the Poissonian on psi, plus uh, the potential energy u times psi is equal to the energy in number times psi, okay? And so um, now we basically just um, plug in our expression from the previous view graph right here for the Laplace operator, del squared, and we get minus h bar squared over 2m times this whole nasty thing in, in brackets, plus u of r times psi is equal to e psi. Now, you may wonder why in the heck we're doing this when this seems to become much more complicated. The reason why we do this is because it, what we, what we gain is that we have a, 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 a basically a trivially simple expression for the potential energy. But that means that our, um, that our uh, kinetic energy term is complicated, okay? So that's what we give up. It turns out if you did it the other way, it might seem simpler, but in fact, it's it becomes even harder to solve, okay? And so this is this is um, this is the game that we've played. We've basically given up. We've we've gotten we've we've been able to write our potential energy term trivially, um, as long as, uh, but in order to do that, we have to write our kinetic energy term. Uh, becomes kind of complicated, okay? Um, so as we've done before, we're going to look for solutions that are separable, that is that um, where we can write the wave function psi as a product of uh, a function which depends only on position r and a function in this case which depends on both theta and phi. What we'll find later on is that y the function of theta and phi can be separated into a function for theta and a function for phi, but we're going to leave it like this for the moment.